So one thing I've been struggling with is getting decent performance on the new 3DS XL using the PC SX emulator, which I've recently downloaded the recent nightly build of it and been able to, re to enable the UNAI renderer, which has definitely helped considerably. So right now this is running on it. So this game is Guardian's Quest. And with sound disabled, it runs pretty darn well. So there are two different locations you need to go to on here. One, you need to go into the quick menu and go to options. And from here we have various options here. You can choose frame skip, I'll leave that as it is. Enable vibration, dibbering, mainly down here. So pretty much I've been running with UNAI advanced on, enable blending, lighting, fast lighting. And with that, it's been pretty much spot on. From there also, if I go back to the main menu and go to settings, under audio, I've got null on, audio disabled, resampler set to null, and synchronization set to off. Mute, left that as it is. And from there, performance has been pretty darn good. So I'm gonna move around a bit here. As you can see, even spiraling, running at about 60 FPS. So far, it's been the case with most games that I've tested. Yeah, if I can get the menu back up again, there we go. Uh, load content. So, so far, Ace Combat 3 has gone well. Colin McRae Rally has gone well, pretty stable, 50 to 60 FPS. Cool Borders 2, same story. Doom is fine. Driver's not bad unless you get smoke particles, which I'll bring that up just now. Um, I am also using the older GUI rather than the XMB GUI. I find as the menu layout to be a lot simpler to navigate. So navigation purposes, it's, I've found it better, nice and straightforward to find what I need. It does annoy me how you have the two different sets of menus, where you have under quick menu and options, you have these settings. But if I go back to the main menu and go settings and video, I get a completely different set. Scaling, I've got it set as 32 by nine, not the default, but I do find it to mostly reduce stretching while still filling up the screen. Now if I get through here, if it lets me skip through. I should have done a quick save on this one, sorry. But yeah, with it, just simply with those settings and the audio disabled, it's most stuff is fairly playable. Um, next up I'll play Tony Hawk 2 and you'll be able to check that out as well. I'll hold it forward here. This is basically the nearly the real-time FPS down the bottom here. I know if I turn the internal FPS on, it is nowhere near being accurate. Take a ride, San Francisco. So daytime is probably more demanding, longer draw distance. Now, audio, if I turn audio up, we have no audio. As you can see, it's playing it reasonably smooth. So 54, 57, so pretty decent, pretty playable at this point. Uh, we'll just try and get some cops onto my tail if I stop doing burnouts. Uh, wherever they may be, they probably not show up when you actually want them to. No, still no coppers. Disappointing. Well, then I'll just do some burnouts and see how low we can get that FPS. 51, 53. So yeah, still almost playable. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but not bad at all. If I did enable audio, I would expect the FPS to drop by probably around about 10 to 20 FPS. There we go. Bit of a claw method to get the cop car. Look at the cop car. So 
they're still relatively solid. Almost believe it's probably playing it better than what the PS1 originally played it at. Anyway, enough cop chases. If I can get out of it. There we go. Load content. And I will go to Tony Hawk 2. Now, Vagrant Store is there, but it's currently crashing for me, so I need to get my hands on a different version. Otherwise, I would load that up as well to show you guys. If I turn the volume up just to see. Yeah, failed to start audio dr driver, which is pretty much what I want. So, run 60 FPS right now. But I find pretty much most games I've chucked at it, it usually runs anywhere from 40 FPS onwards, especially with the settings that I've currently got, especially killing audio emulation. With audio emulation killed, most stuff seems to run fairly well. There we go, 40 FPS. So 55 there, crashed on the ground. Ooh, some slow time in the air there. So it dropped around 54 FPS. Let's break this window and see what happens. 43 FPS in the air there, so not quite perfect. So yeah, fairly hit and miss what you're getting on here with Tony Hawk. So I'd almost classify it as not re oh, playable, but not perfect, not at all. But if you just wanted to play some Tony Hawk on the go, very may worthwhile be, or may be an avenue to play it. So close content, load content, downloads. What else can we try? Colin McRae is perfectly fine. I'm um, not sure what else is going to stress it out in here. Harvest Moon, Incredible Crisis, Matt Hoffman's basically the same as Tony Hawk. Nah. Mm, what would you like to see? Um, Silent Hill. I'll bring that up. But yeah, basically I've said most of the stuff that I've needed to say about it. It's gone surprisingly well. I was downloaded using the the nightly build for the 3DS and then installed the .cia file for PC SX. And then from there I was able to use the old GUI rather than the newer style. And from there it's been pretty good once that audio has been disabled. So I do find the buttons on the back to be fairly challenging to press. L2 and R2. If I just disable that screen. No, that's not gonna help. Close that screen. So yeah. L2, R2, R1, R L1. It definitely requires a bit of claw action. But if I tap one, whoop, bring up the overlay once more. So yeah, Silent Hill running reasonably good. So the main reason why I was wanting emulation on the new 3DS was a superior, or what I would classify as a superior screen on it. Granted, I don't want to go down the full path of essentially playing it on the, on the laptop, even though that would be possible, I would like the slightly portable option, or at least a better integrated controller, which I'm slowly finding that this is a lot more challenging to play on here so even though this the PSP controller the screen on it might be that great at least the control methods better we're dipping to around 40 FPS here but anyway if you've got a new 3ds it may be worthwhile going down the path of modding it and potentially playing some old PS1 games 
I'm curious to see what I if I enable divering on here. Just I'm looking at the various banding of colors across here. Which I do remember seeing a few different videos talking about divering on here. Um, back, quick menu, options, enable divering on. And it's gone. With divering, also with divering off, we have a, or on, we have a fairly large drop in FPS. But as you can see with divering on, even walking down this alleyway, we do take a bit of a performance hit. I'll just disable it once more just to, to confirm that. But it definitely changes the appearance of the game. So you can experiment further per game and just try various settings from there. See if that makes much of a difference in performance. As you can see, we're back up. So Divering definitely took a fair bit of power out of it. Anyway, that will do for today. Hope this helps you, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.